I am Lakshmi Prasanna, Assistant Professor, Department of ECE, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. In this session, we will discuss about the instruction set of 8051 microcontroller. Especially, we will discuss some instructions like subroutine instructions, arithmetic and logical instructions, and rotate instructions. Now, so here, in 8051 microcontroller, if you wanted to write programming for this microcontroller, the instruction set is very important. So, as we know the general instruction format for 8051 microcontroller, the first part will be the opcode and the second part will be the operand. So, you can also call the opcode part as a mnemonic. So, the opcode indicates the type of operation that is going to be performed, whereas the operand indicates on what variables, on what data, the type of operation is being performed. So here, 8051 microcontroller consists of different instructions. So according to the classification of instruction set of 8051 microcontroller, we have different instructions that comes under data transfer instructions and bit manipulation instruction. So other name for this bit manipulation instruction is Boolean instruction. And another classification is branching instruction. Okay. So here these are all the three types of instructions, the first three classification. We have already discussed in the previous session like data transfer instructions, mu, mu c, mu x, push, pop. So all these are different data transfer instructions. Some of the data transfer instructions we have studied. And under this uh, bit manipulation instructions, we have studied how to set particular bit and how to clear the bit. And in the branching instructions, we have studied about conditional and unconditional branch instructions. Now, another uh, instructions we are going to learn in this session, one is subroutine instructions and arithmetic instructions and next classification, logical instructions and next we are going to discuss about rotate instructions. So, here coming to the subroutine instructions, so the instructions that comes under this classification generally they are used to call the subprograms. Okay. So here let us see what are different uh, subroutine instructions that are present in 8051 microcontroller. So here the first subroutine instruction is L call. So next one is A call. So here L call represents long call and A call represents absolute call. And next instruction is return. It is represented with RET and the next instruction is RETI that means return from the interrupt. So these two comes under return instructions only but those two are different. First return instruction we will use when the subroutine program is written and the second RETI is the instruction we will use when the interrupt program is written. Both are subprograms only. Now, so we will discuss about all these uh, four subroutine instructions in detail. The first subroutine instruction is here L call. So L call represents here long call. Okay. So why it is called long call means in this L call, when this L call instruction is executed, the control can jump to the subroutine anywhere within 64 kilobytes of space that is memory. So when this instruction is executed the control will be jumping to the maximum 64 kilobytes of memory that is why it is called long call. Now so the syntax to represent this L call instruction is so this is L call which comes under opcode that is mnemonic 
and here this uh, subroutine name it comes under operand part which indicates it is a label so l call subroutine name so in this subroutine name we have to indicate the name of the subroutine program so for example if you are going to call any uh, delay in the main program you can write the delay part uh, of the program which consists of some set of instructions required to produce the delay and that delay program can be called in the main program by using the instruction called l call and the subroutine name here is a delay okay and so when this uh, l call instruction is executed what is the type of operation that is going to be performed means so this l call is the instruction which is used to call the subroutine program and when this l call instruction is executed it is going to increment the program counter value by 3 so here program counter is one of the register program counter is a 16 bit register in this 8051 microcontroller so when this l call instruction is executed the program counter will be incremented by 3 after incrementing by 3 it is going to push the values onto the stack so how it is going to push onto the stack means first the lower byte will be pushed and then the higher byte will be pushed now so after pushing the contents onto the stack then the program counter it will be setting to a 16 bit value which follows the l call opcode that means here this l call is the opcode so here we are going to have a delay in particular address after it is incrementing and pushing the contents onto the stack then this l call instruction is going to hold this 16 bit address value where this uh, um, control has to jump so causing the program execution to continue from that address so this is what happens when this l call instruction is executed and next subroutine instruction is a call so here a call represents absolute call so when this instruction is executed the control will be jumping to execute the subroutine program and to what extent it is going to jump means it will be within 2 kb so the main difference between l call and a call is l call jumps by 64 kb whereas this uh, a call is going to jump within 2 kb only and so the syntax to represent this uh, l call instruction is that is a call instruction absolute uh, call instruction is so this is a call which represents opcode and this is the code address which is called the subroutine address where you are going to write the program so if this a call suppose if the code address is 5000 when this instruction is executed it is going to go for the address 5000 in order to execute that subroutine program so for example you can consider here a call subroutine name now so when this a call instruction is executed what is the operation that will takes place means so a call unconditionally calls a subroutine that is indicated by the code address that means when this a call instruction is executed whatever the address you have specified here that particular address will be called unconditionally calling means it is going to execute that program now so after i mean before jumping to that subroutine address what this a call instruction is going to do means this a call instruction pushes the address of the instruction that follows the a call onto the stack and the program counter will be loaded with a program execution continues at the indicated address so after uh, pushing all the contents onto the stack then it is going to load with the program address from where the subroutine has to execute 
So this is the main difference between that uh, L call and A call instruction. So both these are used in order to execute the subroutine program. But L call within 64 KB whereas this A call is 2 KB. And so another subroutine instruction is RET instruction. So here RET is the instruction which we have to write compulsory at the end of the subroutine program. Okay. After executing the subroutine program, if we write that RET instruction, when the controller is going to execute that RET instruction, again the controller will go to the main program so that it executes the remaining program where it has stopped. Okay. So RET is the instruction we will write during subroutine program. So the general syntax of uh, RET instruction is simply RET. You have to write that at the end of the subroutine program. And for example, you have to write RET instruction as it is at the end of the program. Last instruction of your subroutine program. And so when this RET instruction is executed, the control is going to return from the subroutine called by L call or A call. So using this L call and A call instructions, we are going to call the subroutine. But at the end of the subroutine program, we have to write this RET instruction such that the control will come out of that subroutine instruction. And another subroutine instruction is RETI. Okay. So, RET represents return from the subroutine, whereas RETI indicates return from the interrupt. Okay. So, here return from the interrupt means in the program, if you are using the, in the main program, if you are using the instruction in order to call the interrupt program, maybe INT, then that particular interrupt will be executed from the interrupt vector table. And at the last of that particular program, you have to write the instruction called RETI. So if you are using interrupt instruction in the main program in order to call the uh, sub program, we have to use the instruction RETI at the end of that program. So general syntax is RETI, which represents return from the interrupt. And so when this RETI instruction is executed, the control is going to return from the interrupt service routine program. So those are the main subroutine instructions we will use while writing the assembly level language programs in 8051 microcontroller. Now, coming to the next classification of instruction that is arithmetic instruction. So as we know, some arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, and uh, multiplication, division, increment, decrement. So in order to perform all these uh, arithmetic operations, what are the instructions we have to use from the instruction set of 8051 microcontroller? So here are some of the arithmetic instructions. First one is here, ADD. So, ADD represents add operation. So, simply addition operation. So, in this we are not going to consider the carry. So, it is called addition without carry. And next instruction is ADDC. So, this instruction is called addition with carry. So, here this C represents we have to consider carry bit also. Next arithmetic instruction is INC. It represents increment. So increment value, increment operation will be performed only by one. Next instruction is SUB. Here you can also observe B. So it represents subtract with carry. And the next instruction is decrement. Okay, so decrement the value by 1. 
Next arithmetic instruction is MUL, which represents the multiplication operation. And next we have here DIV, which represents division operation. And DAA is another instruction. So it represents decimal adjust for BCD addition. And the next instruction is CJNE, which represents compare and jump if not equal. Okay, so here we have to first compare based on the comparison result, then the control will jump if the comparison operation is not equal. That means if the result is not zero. So here all these are some of the arithmetic instructions that are present in the instruction set of 8051 microcontroller. Now, let us discuss in detail about uh, all that arithmetic instructions. So here, first instruction is ADD instruction, which represents performing addition operation. So if you use simply ADD, Addition operation will be performed between the two operands without considering carry. So here carry means it is the carry that has been generated based on the previous result. Now, so this ADD instruction, it is used to add the source operand and the accumulator value A. And after performing the addition operation, again the result, that is summation result, addition result, it will be stored in a register. So general format we can write here, for example, ADD, A comma B. So this A register comes under destination and this B register comes under source. So after performing the addition operation between these two, the result will be Summation result will be stored in A register only. And so while performing this addition operation, this carry flag, overflow flag, auxiliary carry flag, all these flags will be affected. So based on the inputs what we are taking, there will be effect on these three flags. And so the general format of this addition operation is ADD A comma source. So here A is the default register that we have to place in this uh, destination part and here the source can be either B register or any other memory location. Now, so if we consider here some of the examples are given. So if we write uh, add A comma 32 H, okay. So if you see here before this 32 H there is uh, no hashtag indicated. So if hashtag is indicated, it represents that it is an immediate value. So since here the hashtag is not indicated, it represents that this 32H is a RAM location, RAM address. So when this instruction is executed, it is going to add the contents of RAM address that is placed in this 32H with the content present in this accumulator and that will be stored in the accumulator a register and another one is add a comma at the rate r1 so you can see here this is r1 it is one of the register it is indirectly indicated here so when this instruction is executed it is going to add the content of ram address which is pointed by a register r1 with the contents present in the accumulator a and the result will be stored in the accumulator. Now, add a comma r2 if you write. So it is going to add the contents of register r2 and the contents of accumulator a and it will be stored in a register. So here if you see in all these cases in the destination part you are going to consider here a register only. So that is why the result will be stored in a. And add a comma ash 67, it is represented. So here hashtag is indicated, it represents it is an immediate value. 
but after 67 h is not represented so it is going to consider that value as a decimal value so it is going to add a 67 decimal value into with the a register contents after adding it is going to store the result in accumulator a so that is what about add instruction next coming to another arithmetic instruction it is add c so here add instruction it is same as the previous instruction but in this case the addition operation will be performed along with the carry that is the carry bit generated by the previous result so here we have to consider the carry bit also so this instruction in this instruction the source and accumulator will be added along with this two we have to also add this carry bit and after adding these three the result will be stored in the accumulator the result is sum of source content and uh, carry flag bit along with that the content that is present in a register when this addc instruction is executed the carry flag overflow flag auxiliary carry flag all these flags will be affected and so the general format of this uh, addc instruction is same as the add instruction but here the mnemonic will be addc and so here are some of the examples we have considered based on this addc instruction so this addc a comma ash 76 h so in front of this 76 there is ash indicated so it represents that this 76 is the immediate value so this 76 will be added with the content present in this a register along with that the carry bit will be added after adding these three the result again it will be stored in a register because it is in place of destination another one is addc a comma 56 h so this 56 h is the uh, ram address because there is no hashtag indicated before so it is considered as a ram address so the content present in the ram address location 56 h will be added with the content present in a register along with this carry bit after that the entire result will be stored in this a register only and so that is the main difference between add and addc instructions next arithmetic instruction is inc instruction so here inc indicates increment operation so the operation that means uh, increment the value that is present in that register by only one so this is the instruction that adds to the adds one to the destination the destination part can be in any register or it may be any memory location. So when this INC instruction is executed, there will not be any effect on the flags. So the general format of this uh, increment instruction is INC increment it is and here this is the destination. So this destination part can be either any register or it may be any memory location and so if we consider here the example inc r5 okay so here r5 is a register when this instruction is executed it is going to add one to the number that is present in the register r5 and inc at the rate or not so at the rate or not means it represents it is the uh, or not address when it is executed it is going to add one to the number that is present in the address or not ram address handled by a register or not and so if you write here inc a a is a register so in place of destination there is a register when it is executed it is going to add 1 to the number that is present in a register 
So increment 43 H, if this instruction is executed, it is going to add 1 to the value 43 so that it becomes 44. So that is what about the increment instruction. And next arithmetic instruction is SUBB. So it represents subtract with borrow. That means here subtraction operation will be performed along with carry. So here in the flag register of 8051, uh, since there is no uh, flag related to borrow, in this case also we have to consider the carry bit only. So subtraction operation will be performed between uh, uh, destination and source. Along with that, the carry bit will be subtracted. So that is what here, subtract with borrow. So though there is borrow here, we have to consider subtraction with carry. So when this instruction is executed, it is going to subtract the source byte and the carry flag from the destination which we have considered as A register. After performing this subtraction operation, again the result will be stored in A register because it will be there in the destination. So when this subtract with borrow instruction is executed, the overflow flag, carry flag and auxiliary carry flags will be affected. Now, so in order to perform the normal subtraction instruction, we have to clear the carry bit. And then we have to perform the operation so that the simple subtraction operation will be performed. And so general format of this uh, SUBB instruction is SUBB A comma SRC. So here this A is the default accumulator register. Here in place of this source register, we can consider any uh, normal register or any other memory location. So the contents of this uh, source uh, carry bit will be subtracted from the content of this A register and the result will be stored in A. So for example, you can see here move A comma ash 78H. So when it is executed, the value 78 will be moved into A register. So A is equal to 78. And if you are using the CLRC instruction, it represents clear the carry bit. So the carry bit will be cleared, that is CY will be equal to 0. And when this subtraction instruction SUBB is executed, since here the carry bit is 0, the content of A and the con uh, 23 will be considered. So here A minus 23, generally minus CY operation will be performed, but here CY is 0. So totally A minus 23 will be performed and the result will be stored in A because it is in the destination. And next arithmetic instruction is DEC instruction. So here DEC represents decrement operation. So when this instruction is executed, it is going to subtract a value 1 from the destination and which can be any register or any RAM location. So here the uh, destination path can be considered as any register or any other memory location. So when this instruction is executed, that particular content present in the register or any other memory location, it will be decremented by 1. So when this decrement instruction is executed, there will not be any effect on the flags. So general format of this decrement instruction is DEC destination. So here the destination part can be uh, any register or any RAM location. Now, so for example, here we can consider DEC R3. So when this instruction is executed, it is going to subtract 1 from the content that is present in R3 register. Next one is DEC at the rate R1. So when it is executed, it is going to subtract 1 from the number pointed by R1. And other arithmetic instructions are, one is MUL. So MUL represents multiplication operation. 
So when this instruction is executed, it is going to perform the multiplication operation between two unsigned numbers. So while taking any two numbers to perform multiplication, we have to see that one number should be present in A register and other number should be present in B register. So both this A and B are 8-bit registers. So when the multiplication operation is performed in between these two registers, the result will be greater than 2 bytes. So in some, in such a situation, the lower byte of the result will be stored in A register, whereas the upper byte of the result will be stored in B register. And when this MUL instruction is executed, the overflow flag, carry flag, so all these flags will be affected. So the multiply instruction clears the carry flag and set the overflow flag if the result after getting multiplication, if it is greater than the value FFH. Why? Because here the maximum uh, value that can be developed after multiplication is FF. Now, so the general format of this multiplication instruction is MUL A B. So for example, we can consider here mu A comma ash 89 H. So one value you are taking in A register is 89 and another value is 97 what we are taking in the B register. And if you use this MUL instruction, Multiplication operation will be performed between this uh, 89 and uh, 97. Okay. And uh, the result uh, we are going to get here is 50CFH. So how this 16-bit uh, result will be stored means in A, LSB will be stored that is CF. And in B register, MSB, will, MSB bit will be stored that is 50. Okay. And here the overflow flag bit will be set because you have performed the uh, multiplication operation between two 8-bit numbers, but here the result is greater than 8-bit. Next arithmetic instruction is DIV, that is division uh, instruction. So in order to perform the division operation, we have to take the two numbers. Okay. So let us consider here we are going to divide the content of A with the content of B. Okay. And after performing the division operation between this uh, dividend and divider, what you are taking in A and B, you are going to get the result that is reminder and quotient. So how the result will be stored mean quotient will be stored in A register and the reminder will be stored in B register. And while performing this division operation, the overflow flag, carry flag, these flags will be affected. So the general format of this DIV instruction is DIVAB. So here is the example. So 245 we are taking in A register and 17H we are taking in B register. When the division operation is performed, we are going to get the uh, quotient and reminder. Quotient is 14, it is stored in A register and reminder is 7, it is stored in B register. And in this case, the carry flag is 0 and overflow flag is also 0. Because if you are performing any uh, division operation between two 8 bits, here the result is within 8 bits only. So that is why carry flag is 0 and overflow flag is also 0. And another arithmetic instruction is DAA, which represents decimal adjust for BCD addition. So this instruction is for decimal adjust accumulator after BCD addition. So when this instruction is executed, the carry flag is affected. The general format of this instruction is DAA. And next arithmetic instruction is CLRA which is called clear the accumulator. When it is executed, the accumulator will be cleared. That means uh, accumulator value will be zero. So none of the flags will be affected when this instruction is executed. Another arithmetic instruction is uh, CJNE. It is going to compare and uh, then it is going to jump 
if the result is not equal. So this instruction first it compares the source and destination operands. If they are not equal, then the control is going to branch to the target address. Otherwise, in general, the program will be executed in the sequential order. So when it is executed, the carry flag is not affected. So here comparison operation means based on the operands you are taking in source and uh, destination. Comparison operation means negative operation. So if the destination that is selected is greater than the source, in this case carry is zero. If destination is selected lesser than the source, in this case the carry flag is one. And if the destination is equal to the source, the carry flag is zero. So compare and jump if not equal. So if both source and destination are not equal only, it is going to jump to the target address. So the general format of this CJNE is destination comma source. So the compare operation is performed in between these two. If they are not equal, then it is going to jump to this target address. And next classification is about logical instructions. So here different uh, logical instructions are ANL. So ANL represents logical and ORL that is logical or and XRL logical XOR. And another one is CPL complementing the register. So let us discuss about all these instructions. So ANL represents logical and so when this instruction is executed, the logical AND operation will be performed between this source and destination operands and the result will be stored in the destination variable. It may be either register or memory location. So during this instruction execution, flags will not be affected. General format of ANL instruction is destination comma source. So for example, if you take ANL A comma R2, and operation will be performed between the contents of these two registers. So for example, the value what you are taking in A is D3. Convert that into binary value and R275. Convert that into the binary value. Then considering the AND truth table, if this ANL instruction is executed, the result will be 51H. Okay. So how you will get this 51H means? You have to consider the truth table of AND gate, then perform the AND operation between two bits. It leads to the result of ANL instruction and it will be stored in A register. Another logical instruction is ORL, which is logical OR. Same as AND instruction, it is going to perform the OR operation between the destination and uh, source operands and the result will be stored in destination. So when this instruction is executed, it is not showing any effect on the flag register. So this is the general format of uh, ORL instruction that is ORL destination comma source. So for example, if you take ORL A comma 2, our operation will be performed between the contents of this uh, A and R2 registers and the result will be stored in this A register because it is in place of destination. So for example, consider D3 in A register and 75 in R2 register. Considering the truth table of uh, OR gate, when this ORL instruction is executed, the result will be stored in A as F7H. And another logical instruction is XRL. So that is logical XOR. So same as AND OR instruction. So when this XOR instruction is executed, the exclusive OR operation will be performed between the contents of source and destination and the result will be stored in destination variable. So when this instruction is executed also, flags will not be affected. So general format of this XRL instruction is XRL destination comma source. So in between these two, the XOR operation will be performed and the result will be stored in the destination only. 
So consider this is the example. So in place of destination, a register is considered and source or not register is considered. And the content that we are taking in a register, for example, C3 and or not register is A, A. So when this XRL instruction is executed, the content that is present in this destination register, that is A register is 69 H. So how we will get this 69 H means? We have to consider the truth table of XOR gate, apply the logic between uh, uh, each bit, then we are going to get the result of A. Another logical instruction is CPL. It is going to uh, make the complement of the data present in that particular register. So when this instruction is executed, it is going to complement each bit present in the accumulator. So when this instruction is executed, there will not be any effect on the flag register. So general format is CPL destination. So whatever we take in this destination part, okay. So the content present in that will be complemented. So for example, if you take this CPL A, A is the register we have considered in the destination and we are going to take the data in A register as C3. And if you apply this CPL instruction, the data which is present in this accumulator register will be complemented. Okay. So C3 will become 3C. Why? Because here ones will become zeros. Okay. And here this uh, zeros will become ones complemented. Next, coming to the next classification that is uh, rotate instructions. Here we have different uh, rotate instructions that is RLA, which represents rotate left the contents of accumulator and RLCA. So here re -re C represents, this is rotate left only, but we have to consider here carry bit also. So it represents rotate left the contents of A along with the carry. Next one is RRA. So it represents rotate right the contents of A. We have to exclude the carry bit there. And next instruction is RRCA, which indicates rotate right the contents of A along with the carry bit. And last rotate instruction is swapping. So considering here the detailed discussion about all these rotate instructions. So RLA represents rotate left the contents of A. So here the content whatever you are taking in A register will be rotated. So in this case, we should not consider the carry bit. And when this instruction is executed, flags will not be affected. So for example, if you take RLA, so the data which is present in accumulator here, it is 11000011. So when this RL instruction is executed, it represents rotate left. So the carry bit will be at the left side. Okay, so rotate, uh, sorry, rotate left means here we have to consider the value and you have to shift that towards left. Here carry bit should not be considered. So rotating left means, so this one will be coming here. And uh, so this is one, zero, 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 and here one, one. Okay, and uh, so here if you see the accumulator, it is uh, all, um, one zero 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 one 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 one. So here, generally, while considering rotating left, this carry bit will be here. So you have to exclude this carry bit. And here there will be vacant bit where you have to fill the value. So rotating left means, so this is the value that you have to replace here because we have to rotate the left bit. So this is the value that will be present in the accumulator. Okay. So if it is carry, you have to consider the carry bit and that carry bit should be rotated. And next instruction is RLCA, which represents rotate left the content of A, but you have to consider here the carry bit also. 
Now, so when this instruction is executed, the flags will not be affected. So bit 7 of the accumulator will be moved into the carry flag and the original value of the carry flag will be moved into bit 0 position because carry bit we have to consider, we have to perform the rotate left operation with carry. So for example, this is the RLC instruction. The content present in this A register will be rotated along with the carry. So here the content what you are taking in A is 11000011. So this is also rotate left only. So carry bit will be at the left side. Okay. So rotate left means here 11000011. So this bit will be vacant. Okay. And here this is the CY bit and we are going to consider here the carry flag bit is 1. So that is why the carry flag bit will be uh, considered here as 1 because here we are, have assumed the carry flag bit as 1. So this carry flag bit should be eliminated and this is the result that will be stored in the accumulator when this instruction is executed. Similarly for rotate right the content present in the accumulator. So in this also flags will not be affected. So for example, if you take RRA, rotate right with, uh, rotate right the content of accumulator without carry. So here the content of A we are taking is 11000011. So rotate right means right side you have to shift. So the carry bit should be at the right side. So here this bit will be shifted 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0 and here 2, 1s. So this bit will be vacant and this carry bit should be neglected. Why? Because this is the operation without considering carry. Okay. So here the last bit should be, uh, the vacant bit should be filled with this bit before the carry bit. Okay. This is the carry bit. So before the carry bit there is 1. So we have to replace here 1. So, this is the result that will be stored in the accumulator. Okay. So, if it is uh, considering carry, you have to use RRC A. Rotate right operation will be performed along with the carry bit. During this instruction execution, there will not be effect on any flags. So, RRC A. So, for example, here you are taking in A 11000011. So when the rotate right operation is executed, carry will be there at the right side. So here 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 will be there. And since you are considering here carry is 0, that is uh, this is 0. So this carry bit will be excluded and since here carry bit is analyzed as 0, it will be copied in the vacant bit. And uh, so this is the result that will be stored in the accumulator. And the last instruction is swap instruction. So when this instruction is executed, if it is 8-bit data, the lower 4 bits, that is lower nibble and higher 4 bits is called higher nibble. Lower nibble and higher nibble will be swapped. When this instruction is executed, flags will not be affected. So for example, swap A is the general format. The content present in A register we have to consider here. So this is the content C3, we have represented it as binary. So this is the lower nibble, okay, and this is the higher nibble. When this swap instruction is executed, the lower nibble is 0011, it will be swapped to the higher nibble. And here 1100, it will be swapped to the lower nibble, okay. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.